Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we have the Elegoo Centauri Carbon. This is Elegoo's latest FDM 3D printer, as well as their first fully enclosed FDM 3D printer. So in today's video, I'm going to be doing a full unboxing as well as the initial setup, how to download the software, talking about some of the test prints that I did, and overall what my personal opinion is on this 3D printer. And uh, spoiler alert, it's pretty good. So that way, any more time, let's jump into the video. Okay, so before we jump into the unboxing, let's just go over a few things. First of all, the price. On Elegoo's official website, it is currently priced at $299.99. USD, so around $300 before tax. And for this 3D printer, that is amazing. And the stripped down version of it, titled the Elegoo Centauri, is $199.99. Along with it being fully enclosed in a metal frame, the printer also includes a camera that has live stream and time lapse capability, a max print speed of 500 millimeters a second, carbon infused filament or carbon fiber filament printing capability, and a ton of other features that printers like the Bamboos and the Creality K2s and stuff like that have. So now that we have the basics out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into the unboxing. So first things first, this is the box and it's kind of neat because it actually comes with handles to pick up. So that's kind of nice. So the first thing we have here is the user guide as well as the instructions on how to set it up. Pretty standard stuff that you get in every 3D printer box. The first actual printer piece that we pull out of the box is the lid. And once we take the lid out and remove the foam, we can go ahead and take the rest of the printer out of the box. It's all enclosed in this bag, so you just gotta pull it out carefully. Then we have this small cardboard box, and this is going to include all of the additional pieces to set up the printer, including the screen, the filament spool holder, the power cable, and some extra filament and tools. And it also comes with a little bit of grease that you can use to put on the different rods to help the printer run smoothly. Next up, we're going to carefully cut off the zip ties on the cardboard that is surrounding the extruder assembly. Then we're going to carefully take off and unattach the cardboard. Then to open up the actual printer, they have this aluminum tape on the top and bottom of the door with a plastic sheet protecting the glass. Go ahead and carefully remove those and also remove the plastic surrounding the door. And for some reason on my printer, the magnet that helps the door close and attach to the printer was stuck on the plastic. So I had to end up super gluing that back to the printer. Once you have that removed and the printer open, you can then remove the protective cardboard and styrofoam. And free the LCD cable by peeling back this piece of tape. And while we're here, go ahead and grab the LCD itself and attach the cable underneath it and then just press it into place on the frame of the printer. Next up, the filament spool holder is as easy as ever. You're just going to go ahead and place it in, twist it counterclockwise until it's snug. Next up, go ahead and grab the lid to the Centauri Carbon and peel off both sides of the protective film. And then place it on top of the printer with the handle facing the front. Once you've done all that, you can then go ahead and plug in the AC power cable to the back of the printer and switch it on. So as soon as the printer boots, it's then going to ask you for your language and it's going to tell you to loosen up and remove these three hex screws that are on the inside of the printer. These are used to hold the print bed down whenever it's being transported. Then once removed, go ahead and hit confirm. And the printer will go ahead and run a device self check, which is a 30 minute calibration and diagnostics test. And it actually does take about 28 minutes. I went ahead and timed it. So give yourself about 30 minutes to run that. Then once it's done with the device self-checked, this is the home screen. As you can see, it's going to show you the basic stuff, the light, the network, the nozzle and bed temp, as well as give you the option to move certain parts of the printer around to control it, set up the Wi-Fi, preheat the bed, print files, calibrate the system and all other things like that. So I'll just go ahead and show you guys all of the menu.
And once you've went ahead and checked out your printer, you can then go ahead and load up some filament. And once you have your filament of choice loaded up, you can then go ahead and go to the files and print any of the test files on the printer that's already set up. And here is my first print on the Elegoo Centauri Carbon. It is the 15 minute Benchy and it came out phenomenal. A little bit of stringing on the inside, but that is something that can be adjusted. And it was probably because I had the lid on it. After that, I did a little bit more rigorous testing. This is a Stormtrooper that had a lot of overhangs and weird angles and it came out good. Ran out of filament and tried to replace it, but I didn't exactly load the second roll incorrectly. So that'll be something we talk about later. Next up, I wanted to test how well it would be able to handle a filament change and see if it would line up correctly on the print without it being moved or displaced at all. So I did a king frog and I paused it at this level and then loaded up a gold to print off the crown. And once the nozzle went ahead and cleared off all of the excess filament, it then started the print of the gold. And before I knew it, the print was done and perfect. Now to download the Elegoo slicing software, all you're gonna have to do is take the included USB flash drive, plug it into your computer, go to the wizard where it says, you know, install Windows or whatever, and just follow along. It's pretty simple and just download the slicer. Now the slicer is basically another copy of the Prusa, Bamboo, whatever slicer, any Cubic slicer next. They're all starting to look the same. So it's pretty much the same as every other slicer. And to enable remote print, all you have to do is click on the little Wi-Fi symbol that is next to the printer name, type in the IP and you're connected. Now that was the quickest and easiest printer setup I've ever done. It literally took me from start to finish like 10 minutes. You take it out of the box, plug in the screen and turn it on. It's pretty much ready. And it's pretty crazy to think that like the first 3D printer that I had, which was the Ender 3, you literally had to screw on and bolt together every single piece on that 3D printer. Whereas the printers that you get nowadays, you take it out of the box and plug it in and it works. And these prints come off way faster and way nicer than those printers ever could. I didn't want to just leave the video at that, so I went ahead and did a couple of test prints. I made a couple of these little Star Wars characters because they had a lot of overhangs and weird detail lines that it would have had to do to get a good print. And it came out pretty good. The overhangs were a little bit um, rough, but besides that, the rest of the prints are really, really good. You can see a lot of the detail on Chewbacca and of course the Stormtrooper. A little bit of trouble on some of the overhangs, but not bad with very minimal support. And the nice thing that I like about the slicer is that it has an option in the support column that allows you to only use supports on like critical areas of the model. So you don't have to have supports everywhere. It's only like if it really, really needs it. So I tried it on that and it worked out really well. And I printed off a C3PO. Now something that I didn't realize was super important until I started using this printer because I've never had an enclosed one before was that you need to make sure that you have the lid on or off depending what type of material you're using. So just for example, I printed off this C3PO while the lid was on in PLA and it had really terrible work on the overhangs and it made it all droopy and dented looking and when I took the lid off and printed it it came out perfectly fine some of the area is a little rough because there was no support but besides that a hundred times better than this one that's just something to keep in mind whenever you're using the closed printer is you have to make sure that you have the lid on or off depending on which material you're using and a cool thing too about the printer is a lot of the files that it comes included with is accessories for the 3d printer there is a lid rack that you can actually install onto the side of the printer that I made a short about a while ago where you can literally take the lid off and then just slide it onto the side of the printer so that way it's out of the way but it's not you know it could be put on a table or a couch where it could get damaged and also a mini Centauri carbon print that is a filament poop catcher so it's pretty cool that they come with those little accessories and if it helps save money for what they were going to use to make the printer and we don't have to worry about it, we can just print it off and I love that. So yeah, pretty much everything about this 3D printer is amazing. I really don't have any complaints at all. I have a few small cons just because I didn't want to say that it was absolutely perfect because there is very minimal nitpicks that I have about it. So first things first is the light. There's almost no light in this 3D printer. The camera has a very small LED that you're able to turn on and off when you're monitoring the print, but when it's closed and even when you have the light on and the door is open, it's really hard to see in there. But because it is a all metal frame, you can actually attach magnetic lights or there's even models that people have made online already where you can actually lift up the lid a little bit and print off these little like braces that go along the edge and you can attach an LED strip on the inside. So there's a couple of different modifications and if them not including the light helped knock down the price of the printer, 
I'm all about it. Um, it's not a huge deal, but it's just a little dim. And the other thing that I didn't really like was the way that they installed the Bowden tube. It's a pretty tight turn that it takes when it goes from the back of the printer down to the extruder. It's a very hard turn. And when you're loading in the filament, it almost kind of feels like you hit the end, but you got to push it a little bit more and it'll kind of go through that curve. I'll show you guys and you'll understand whenever you go to use it, but it's a lot more pressure than you'd think you'd have to push to get around a corner through the Bowden tube. And the first time I did it, I didn't reach all the way through to get to the extruder. So it ended up just not even finishing the print. So that's another thing that I wish was a little bit different and people might be making modifications to it. Like I said, somebody already made a lid riser. So that also gives more room for that Bowden tube to kind of have a little bit more leeway to getting to the extruder. Not the biggest deal in the world, but it is something that you're gonna have to kind of get used to and remember whenever you're changing the filament. And yeah, I printed off a 15 minute Benchy that came out really good as well. A little bit of stringing, but besides that, a really good 3D print. And I also tried to change the filament out with a King Frog that I printed off and it came off really good as well. And also this 3D printer is really loud. It's really loud for some reason. I don't know why it's so loud, but it actually is like a lot louder than any other 3D printer that I have right now. But that's not the biggest issue in the world, but it is kind of noisy. So yeah, that is the Elegoo Centauri Carbon. Super great, fully enclosed 4XY 3D printer at a super low price at $299. Definitely one of the best starting or veteran 3D printers out there on the market right now. And I think the only thing that might be making this any better is if they add an AMS or an H-Pro, whatever you want to call it, a multi-filament system. So that way you can print in multiple colors. They already have the poop shoot. It could definitely be coming. We'll see what they end up doing with it. So a multicolor system or multi-filament system for the 3D printer would make it all that much better. So we'll see what they end up doing. And if you are in the market right now for a multi-filament 3D printer, check out this video right here where I do an unboxing and setup of the Cobra 3 combo. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you all in the next video.